All right, morning show with Anthony here on 92.9 and 96.9 EHM. Super excited to have uh, our next guest on the phone with us. As far as excitement levels go for new music here on EHM, these guys are topping the charts for me personally. From the Black Pumas, it's uh, Eric Burton. Eric, how are you, my friend? Hey, man, I'm not doing too bad, man. I'm just thankful for what's what's going on and uh, excited to bring you guys some new music. Yeah, man, you got a lot going on. And uh, you just told me you got Adrian there with you. So maybe we'll have him chime in here a little bit. But um, things yes, are sir. we got the wizard right here with us, man. <laughs> the wizard. Things are kind of exploding for you guys right now. Um, I'm sure you're doing interviews like crazy. Give me just your feeling right now. Are you do you feel like you're spinning out of control? Are you elated? What's what's your feeling right now uh, with the group? I think for someone like me, comparatively to someone like Adrian, who's been in the this position before, where he's doing a lot of traveling and on different stages, you know, I think that um, like today, especially, it's funny that uh, you asked that question because I, I'm being faced with the challenge of uh, balancing it all. Right? You know, I'm like this musician and you know the singer artist guy that also has real life things to deal with and like my family and making sure that like <laughs> my rent is paid at home and you know my roommates are all good to go and this and that that um, you know it could it could be a little overwhelming but uh you know i'm totally excited about what's happening because you know much like uh you know life was when i was kind of touring with this busking group right from the west coast all the way up to like up the up the west coast from santa monica to seattle washington and then back down to austin i experienced you know like traveling in a van with a couple of guys stinky feet and like you know just the whole <laughs> the whole thing that like being in this situation where the van is a little bit bigger the band is a bit bigger and the venues are definitely a lot bigger than um, what I experienced and was exposed to that, uh, it's just a very exciting thing. And, um, just trying to keep up with, uh, you know, what town we are, what we are in, like currently, it's kind of hard to, uh, keep certain things in perspective like that, but it definitely feels like a roller coaster that I don't want to stop riding. <laughs> Eric is with us from the uh, Black Pumas here. Um, let's tell everybody, let's share the story of how the group sort of came together because it is an interesting tale where sure. Adrian had some success and played with some big artists and had some projects behind him and started writing something and was looking for a voice. And here you right. come, the polar opposite. You're out on the streets, you're busking, yeah. you're grinding. <laughs> And you Straight guys found a door style, man. Yeah. Yeah. And you Straight guys up. found a way to come together. But what I love about your story, and I'll let you tell your story that sure. it sounded to me like from what I've gathered and it's hard to get info on you guys. Cause you're so new that it uh -huh. took you a little while to, once you were aware of Adrian, it took you a little while to kind of call him and, and get together with him. Is that true? Oh, for, for sure, man. I mean, I think that, uh, upon busking, um, you know, on my, in my favorite spots in Austin and doing some of the open mics and also having some uh, solo gigs at, uh, the various venues that I was exposed to at that time. Uh, you know, I was just kind of like inundating myself in the music culture that is Austin, you know, music community. It's very incestuous in that, like it, definitely kind of has a way of sucking in new artists who are, you know, who they uh, hold as decent at what they, what, what you do. So, I mean, I was kind of uh, embraced as soon as I got to Austin, um, you know, thank the music gods for that. And I think that, uh, you know, in doing that, I met Adrian, um, you know, via, via email. So like upon meeting Adrian, I would, you know, I'd get hit up by different people who were like really moved by by the vocals and some of the songs that I think after a while I began to, uh, you know, become a, a bit of a recluse as far as like creating music because I just wasn't necessarily, um, you know, getting sounds produced that I actually enjoyed. So I was, you know, um, upon getting with Adrian, I was learning how to engineer and kind of try to produce a sound of my own that, you know, would float my boat well enough uh, that when Adrian hit me up through a mutual friend of ours, Brian Ray, uh, I took a little while to respond um, till, you know, I, I read about Adrian and my roommates 
you know, at that time were telling me that, man, you got to hit that guy back up because, you know, he's jammed with Prince, you know, uh, in a backing band. And it's just a great artist. So many people have so many wonderful things to say about Adrian Casada in Austin. Yeah, he was uh, working on some stuff where at the end of that, uh, like getting these instrumentals together, he reached out to some friends in, in, in France and London and Los Angeles and New York, kind of all over the place to, to, you know, see who would be a good fit for, you know, these instrumentals that he was kind of, uh, you know, uh, cooking together. Uh, so, you know, that when we finally got together, it was just such a, you know, such a magical thing, man. It was, I don't, I don't know how to explain being in the studio with Adrian Casada for the first time in that we, when we recorded Black Moon Rising and Fire, we, we didn't know how to, you know, react to it overtly as much as we were excited about that um, internally. Like, I think that we were a little bit, uh, uh, you know, apprehensive to show too much excitement, uh, you know, not knowing how the rest of, you know, our recording together would go. So we just kind of kept recording and, you know, one song turned into five songs, turned into 10 songs, turned into 17 songs, um, turn into the final uh, 10 that you hear on the album. Um, you know, that is the Black Black Pumas project. How um, how far into, well, Colors and Black Moon Rising, those are the first two tracks you guys worked on, right? Yes, yeah. The first the first two tracks that we worked on was uh, Black Moon Rising and I believe Fire. Was, oh, was Fire. The very first two songs that we had recorded, um, the the day that I had gone to, to Adrian. Right. Yeah. How far in, like, give me, a, give me a time frame. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, two hours. Like how far into that are you like, holy cow, this, we got, we got something here. Cause Black Moon, nothing against fire. Fire is like a great track, but Black Moon, yeah. Rise, that song mm -hmm. is, that's an all time song right there. Wow. Well, I really appreciate you saying that because when Adrian sent me a few of the tracks to kind of like uh, entice me to come to the studio and maybe work on a few was kind of the initial request. Um, you know, I, I heard these songs and immediately, you, you know, I kind of got this, you know, a bit of a cinematic quality um, from the soundscape that, you know, yeah. I could just I could see visuals like i'm i'm just a i'm such a visual artist anyway myself person um that you know the songs pretty they, they, they kind of wrote themselves and so adrian kind of actually you know there were when he sent the the track to, there were um kind of guiding lights of uh song titles for me to kind of uh riff off of if i so chose to do so and uh, for black moon rising that was inspired by the solar eclipse in 2000 uh, 17 that uh, we all experienced uh, and he titled the black uh, he titled the black moon rising track solar eclipse which later on i you know changed to black moon rising in you know uh, inspired by that and then um you know as soon as i heard the music to be honest i was there was there was a bit of an, an excitement there right away that you know i'll let i'll let adrian tell you about like I'll, I'll let Adrian talk a little bit. All okay. Right, cool? Sounds good to me, man. All right, man. You know, we got to share the love because uh, <laughs> Adrian is amazing. You guys got to hear it from his perspective as well. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for having me on, by the way. Yeah, man. Yeah. Here's Adrian. Hello. Hey, Adrian. Thanks for being on with us here on EHM, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, so, uh, you know, getting to, to, to chat with Eric, um, I read a quote somewhere that you said that you were, when you were putting together this project, you were looking for someone who liked Neil Young as much as Sam Cooke. And that, that's a spectrum right there. Two incredible pillars of artists, but a spectrum right there. Um, wh yeah, yeah. Why was that your criteria for this particular project? Um, you know what I did, what I uh, didn't want to do. And I felt like, uh, um, the last thing I wanted to do was really when I started working on these songs was, was honestly start a band. I was like, I'm, I'm, you know, I've been in a few bands. I was like, I, I, uh, I was just kind of working on some songs, but I, what I didn't want was, uh, something that was too retro in, in the way that, you know, kind of a soul review style, um, 
thing. I wanted something a little bit more uh, with a little, with, you know, two two dimensional or or just multi dimensional. Um, so I I didn't know exactly what I wanted, but I kind of it was more like I knew what I didn't want. You know, it was uh, mm-hmm. so I I'd asked some people. You know, anybody know a singer for these songs? And again, originally it was just some. It started with just some songs. You know, I didn't know what we were gonna do with. And when I when I saw. Eric, when somebody mentioned him, I looked him up and looked on YouTube and, and all the videos I saw were him playing, which was like, oh man, that's, that was way more compelling than somebody who is, you know, a quote unquote, you know, soul singer. I, I, I felt like it was more, he was a singer being himself with soul rather than fitting in that neatly in that genre of soul if that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah totally oh and i was like that was just uh, that was i was like oh, okay this is it this is somebody like this who can you know we can play a you know again just to reference that that you brent brought up you know, we could do that in addition to uh something that sounds like a club so that's what it originally intrigued me probably even met him you know that was just i was like okay yeah a lot of people sent me ideas on people that i actually didn't I actually didn't reach out to anyone, but, but Eric. So yeah, that's, that's was, uh, that was, you know, there was a, a lot of, uh, dimension to what he was doing that, that intrigued me right away. How much, do, how much of an adjustment was it? Do you think for him going from busking? Cause I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Adrian, not knowing Eric and just having spoken with him for a little bit, he seems like the nicest guy <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> But when you yeah, yeah, something like that. When you read the story, though, you kind of like a guy out there busking. It, it, you get like a loner sense. You get like a stubborn person sense, like doing it all out on his own. You know, not not sort of succumbing to any sort of pressure from the industry. Did you see him go through an adjustment from busking to like, oh my god, I'm in the room with, you know, Adrian. He's got all these. You know, he's got this resume. He's a Grammy Award winner. You know, he's got all this stuff. Prince, all that. Did you see him go through an adjustment period? I saw an adjustment um, from Eric, not not necessarily coming into the studio with me uh, and and who I was or what I brought to the table. Cause I, he didn't even know who the hell I was. And he took took a couple of weeks to get back to me. But uh, <laughs> with the adjustment I saw mainly, I think, from what I knew of, of, of Eric from his was becoming a front man to a band you know which i don't i don't know how much uh he had done he had been you know kind of performing solo and for and jamming with friends and everything like that but i uh saw him go from being able to put away the guitar t- and and show his his front man chops you know i knew that there was there was a, the best voice i had heard i knew it was like somebody who i loved the way he actually loved the way he played the guitar I was like man i was hoping we would do that but i had never seen you know, I feel like we saw the progression of him putting down the guitar and and uh, fronting a large, you know, not too large of a band, but a a, a band. Um, and that's something I feel like I we witnessed kind of in real time. And I had no idea, you know, for all I knew, he was gonna just keep the guitar on and and uh, have us back him. So that was a that was one thing that I did see uh, a transition, you know. Yeah. And not and we went full circle. I mean, eventually. Uh, you know, we worked a bunch of songs back in that that were his uh, compositions that he plays guitar on. So, you know, it, I feel like we got the best of both worlds. That's exactly kind of what what uh, I wanted was, you know, I didn't want it to be so one dimensional. I wanted to be able to play, you know, on a Eric on an acoustic guitar and also the band on a, you know, burning soul song. So I feel like we got it both. Um. Steve Gorman, who uh, drums for the Black Crows, and he started this group, Trigger Hippie. I interviewed him a couple of years ago, and uh, he was the first person. And it was funny, because this was just before the Foo Fighters did their Sonic Highways thing. But he was kind of the first person that let me on to the fact that a band's sound, an album sound, it really does depend on where it's recorded. Not just the studio, but the city and the food that you eat while you record and sort of that whole package uh, Eric mentioned Sea Boys before, and my question to you is: the, this project and the sound that you have, that throwback vibe, all that, could this have gotten? Could this band? Could this project have gotten off the ground in any other city outside of Austin? Because that seems to be the place where a little bit different, a little bit outside of the box, kind of, you know, it really thrives in a city like Austin. 
Yeah, you're right. I don't think it would have happened anywhere, anywhere but Austin. Uh, I mean, I've been in Austin longer than I was in my hometown now at this point, you know. Uh, so I consider myself an Austinite as much as I do, uh, you know, somebody from South Texas, which is where I'm from. But and it's not without its flaws, but I do think that it's there's something very special about it. And that's what and I don't think that this would have been able to happen anywhere else because, I mean, I can list off a <laughs> big number of reasons. But, yeah, I do agree that the intangibles like that go into inform how you make the music you know in austin there's really a sense of community there's an incredible amount of talented musicians you know that we could that you could uh there's pl- venues um like c boys club owners like c Bordheimer, who gives a band like us who had literally no history you know he took a chance on us off hearing one song on an mp3 that was unmixed you know that i sent him uh you know so many things oh the culture of, of austin is such that people and support live music nightly you know and um i mean now we've been traveling all over the world and just to give an example love paris paris is an incredible city we were in paris and we couldn't find music you know a a couple of nights i was asking friends in the music scene like where can i go see just something just a good singer or just some music they were like i don't think there's anything going on tonight and that's not the case in austin you know it's very much like there's uh, numerous places to go nightly where whether you want to go see a touring act, a local act, a friend playing at a really small club. Um, and there's a sense of community, you know, you can go, you know, for example, Eric does a, sometimes does still does his solo show um, at a, another venue that Steve, the owner of Sea boys owns kind of a smaller, more singer songwriter type venue. And, uh, he still plays there and, and, you know, you'll see even when we were playing Sea boys, there's just a good community of, of folks and everybody kind of supports each other. You know, I think there's healthy competition, but it's not everybody watching out for themselves. You know, when uh, we go see other friends play, they come see us play. There's always musicians hanging out and there's just a good sense of community that has, hasn't been lost as the city grows. You know, it's going through growing pains, becoming a bigger city. But I think, uh, it's an incredible place for, for somebody, a new band to nurture, you know? All right. I know you got a hard out, so I got two quick questions for you. Okay. What's the best food spot? Cause I know there's tacos, there's brisket. What's the best food spot in Austin? Your favorite right now? Just one food spot. Man. <laughs> uh, oh man. You know, the thing with barbecue, <laughs> if we're going there, I love barbecue, man. It, uh, I feel like I only eat barbecue with people visiting from out of town. I don't feel like we really eat barbecue as much as people think we do. Uh, so I'm going to say, damn, it's hard to pick uh, one spot. Let's see. Uh, yeah, let me think. What's the other question? I'll, come, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot one out back at my other I question. Might need a second on the, yeah. No worries. My other question might be a little bit tougher than that. I know that okay. you guys are going to push this record and, um, you know, you got Mercury Lounge in the city. We're excited about that show coming up July 29th, the black com. get info, get tickets. Um, is it too, is it a bad question to ask you about future plans? Do you see this going past this one record and this tour? Where do you see the project headed? Oh, absolutely. No, that's a, that's a much easier question <laughs> than, than pick, telling you my favorite food in Austin. Uh, <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, um, we when we started recording these songs, you know, I I personally didn't play them for anybody from but my wife for months. I nobody even heard them. Um, I kind of wasn't sure what we were gonna all do with it, and and I mean, I, I I was making songs that I wanted to hear, you know. And I feel like uh, uh, we're still at that point, you know, where it's it's not uh corrupted into you know with anybody over our shoulders putting not yet you know putting any sort of pressure on us i feel like ultimately you know eric said something uh on a flight once where he was like man we, we need to record some more songs so i can have something to listen to and i'm like yeah you know that's and that, that keeping that like those pure intentions of making the music for the exact same reason that we made the first batch of songs was just because we liked them you know um i didn't we didn't know if other people were gonna care at all or like them but it they do and we're super grateful for that and and uh, we absolutely still love to work on new music it's becoming a little more difficult now because we're on tour forever but yeah we're absolutely um <laughs> little by little kind of brainstorming and trading demos and things like that and and you know already kind of starting to talk about when when are we going to find time to to start working on new music i mean and honestly we've been working on new music we have you know five or six unfinished songs that are in various stages 
not to mention countless demos that Eric has that he's made, a few demos that I have and stuff. So, and the idea, I think, for the next one that we uh, we haven't really um, explored is is actually sitting down from scratch to write together. You know, usually it's like him bringing something and I'll do what I do to complement it and vice versa. But uh, what we hadn't, we didn't actually do a lot of was sit down from scratch with an idea and bring up an idea. You know, that's awesome, man. I'm so looking. That's what's next. I'm yeah. looking forward to that because, you know, again, as I go back and I look and, you know, we specialize in new music here at EHM. So, you know, I, I look back at the acts that I'm excited about, you know, Avid Brothers, Dawes, uh, Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats, I would say is the most recent of acts that are like, holy cow, this is amazing. And I'm going to uh, follow everything these guys do and wait for the next thing. You guys are right up there, man. You guys are the newest thing for me. And, uh, and I'm so appreciative. So I get excited to hear you talk about stuff like that, like writing together. I, I cool. appreciate that, man. Yeah, and you know what? Now, 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 okay, I'll think. It, it's really pretty damn hard to to tell you like <laughs> my favorite spot because I don't know that I have a favorite food spot. Mm -hmm. But one unique spot that I like that I recommend to people because it's a, uh, it's uh, it's called uh, Valentina's and it's a, it's a food truck that um, the guy is from South Texas, he's from San Antonio, um, and and he's always kind of made more Mexican food and but he now he's incorporated this sort of fusion of barbecue, Texas barbecue and Mexican food and he makes these these incredible tacos and that place is incredible. That's that's one place that's unique. That's top five for me for sure. Val, Val, what is it called? Valentina? Yeah, Valentina's. Yeah. There it's it's something about and you got the trailers too, right? That's your food trucks. It's basically like just a trailer in a parking lot. That's a whole thing. Yeah. 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 All right. That's awesome. All right. But good this to guy know. brings the the authentic uh South Texas, you know, San Antonio vibe to to Texas barbecue. All right. Well, I'm gonna email you, Adrian, for more places. Uh all right, I'll, man. Please do. I'll let you get back to the tour and everything else. And uh next time you guys come around to New York, make sure you guys uh come on by again, okay? Okay, appreciate that, man. All right, man. Have a good one. All right, thanks. Bye. All right, there you go. Uh, Adrian Casada and uh, Eric Burton. Not Eric Burton. Eric Burton from the Black Pumas. And again, no joke. I'm not blowing smoke here, uh, but I, I listen to a lot of music. A lot. And uh, almost, you know, it can be exhausting at times, you know, because you hear so much stuff. And then every now and then... And there's a lot of it's good that I'm like, oh, this, and we play it on the show here. We do the whole thing. But every now and then, bam, something connects. And I mentioned the people. Dawes was that way for me. Mumford & Sons was that way for me. I remember seeing Mumford & Sons at Terminal 5 in New York City. They they filled the place, but it was like, eh. And then it was like the next week, Mumford & Sons was everywhere. But I remember hearing them for the first time, Little Lion Man, and just being like, holy cow, having that moment. The Avid brothers were like that for me. I would say most recently Nathaniel Rateliff. And it's interesting too, because when you look at the first Nathaniel Rateliff record, that was all him. Uh, and then the second one, which is probably more of my favorite at this point, was him in the band. So to hear Adrian sit there and be like, yeah, what we haven't done yet is you know, sit, sat down and wrote music together. We just kind of each brought individual stuff and finished it. That's really exciting because it worked out really well for Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats. Such a great throwback sound. I can't encourage them enough. Uh, I can't encourage you enough to check them out. The Black Pumas will put links and info up all around. They're going to be at Mercury Lounge coming up on uh, July 29th. Super excited that Eric and Adrian were able to share some time with us and get us a little bit closer to the music right here on The Morning Show with Anthony.